Hey guys, Comet here. Welcome to another Oni tutorial. Now I know uh, this has also been done before, specifically by Tony Advanced, who has some really informative Oxygen Not Included videos. Uh, I'll put a card up in the top right to his original video on this, and he has an addendum in his comment section that I saw that making a self-powered natural gas cooker is no longer possible and I wanted to show that it is actually still possible if you tweak a couple of things that are happening. So I recommend you watch the original video first just as a precursor to this video so that you know what is happening. But I'll try and briefly explain it. We have crude oil down here that is broken up with these liquid valves into one kilogram per second packets in radiant liquid pipe. The crude oil flows up, gets cooled off by the natural gas that flows down and gets sucked up by these gas pumps. And then the cold crude oil flows up this way and counterflows against the hot sour gas moving down this, this direction. So it's warm here really cold here and then really hot up here and that just turns crude oil into natural gas so that you can burn it in natural gas generators because they produce way more power than uh, petroleum generators and you can recover more of the mass that way and natural gas generators have a gas output which makes handling carbon dioxide way easier but anyway that's besides the point this is the self-powered portion so the way it's achieved is by flashing crude oil into sour gas way way above the point where it normally would because there's a difference in specific heat capacity between sour gas and crude oil. I think it's 12%. At least that's what Tony says in uh, the video. I can, I can do the math really quickly. So we have sour gas at 1.898. Crude oil is at one point. Oh wait, no, that's... There we go, 1.69. Yeah, there's the 12%. So, you ha you're generating heat, essentially, when you do that. The heat exchange, then, will be imbalanced because there's a difference in specific heat capacity. So, if I go into paint here... We have cold crude oil moving up. We have hot sour gas moving down. But there's a greater heat capacity in the sour gas than the crude oil. So the sour gas will always overpower the incoming crude oil, which means this condenser will become more and more difficult to be kept cold. So these aqua tuners will need to run more and more to keep this cold. So what he used was hydrogen to supplement the specific heat capacity of the crude oil. And these valves are set to 433.5 each so that we have exactly enough hydrogen to counteract that difference. And then this is the part that's important. We cool off the hydrogen only in this steam room and then send it back down at about 170 degrees. Uh, Tony used steam turbines on the side here and here, and he was cooling down both the sour gas, but also the crude oil, because the crude oil uh, was touching the sour gas, which was being cooled. And if you cool off the crude oil, then you just have to make these aqua tuners run harder. And so by only cooling down the hydrogen, you save power in the aqua tuners. 
Hey guys, uh, Future Gauntlet here. I wanted to explain how the hydrogen supplements the specific heat capacity and balances out the heat exchange. So we have uh, some heat moving up and we have some heat moving down. Now we need these to be equal to each other. So this represents the mass and specific heat capacity or total heat moving up this represents the total heat moving down. So we know what's moving down. It's the 10 kilograms of sour gas times its specific heat capacity. So we can write that in uh, sour gas. Uh, actually, I'll do it this way. So we have the mass of the sour gas times its specific heat capacity of sour gas. So this times this needs to be equal to what's on the other side. So we know that we have crude oil. So mass of crude oil times its specific heat capacity of crude oil plus this is where the hydrogen comes in to balance out this side the mass of the hydrogen times the specific heat capacity of hydrogen now um, we can isolate the mass of hydrogen by subtracting this from both sides. So this will go away and it'll end up over here. So we have the mass of hydrogen times the specific heat capacity. I did it again. Of hydrogen equals the mass of sour gas times the specific heat capacity of sour gas minus now the mass of crude oil times the specific heat capacity of crude oil. Now, the mass of sour gas and the mass of crude oil are the same. They're both 10 kilograms, so those can go away. And we're left with the mass of hydrogen uh, times the specific heat capacity of hydrogen. That is going to equal the specific heat capacity of sour gas minus the specific heat capacity of crude oil. And we're solving for the mass of hydrogen. So we divide by the specific heat capacity of hydrogen. So that will go away. Specific heat capacity of hydrogen. And this will tell us how much, how many uh, grams of hydrogen we will need. So if I get the calculator here, now the specific heat capacity of sour gas is 1.898. So 1.898 then minus the specific heat capacity of crude oil which is 1.69 so minus 1.69 that gives us 0 0.208 then we need to divide that by the specific heat capacity of hydrogen. And I have some hydrogen right here. 
It has a specific heat capacity of 2.4. So divided by 2.4. That gives us 0 0.0. Eight six 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 six, and this is in kilograms. I probably should have wrote that in over here, um, but this is in kilograms. So we're gonna multiply by a thousand to convert it to grams. Did I do a hundred or a thousand? It should be should be that. So we need 867 grams per second of hydrogen going through these gas valves. Now I have two, so I have just divided it by two. And that gives us 433.3. I guess I could change that to 0.3 uh, grams per second in these gas valves. So if you're curious, that that's how you do the math on that. Uh, okay, I'm going to send you back to present me now. Now, he was able to get it to work with just one aqua tuner. I was not able to. I don't know if that's part of the change that he was talking about. And I've just somehow managed to find a workaround to that uh, patch. But this this does work. These are at... 20 kilojoules. If I open that so it's no longer being powered by the dev generator, you see these are staying at 20 kilojoules. The gas pumps down here are being powered by this dev generator. I don't consider them part of the boiler. Um, the only time these will go down is when this aqua tuner is running which is technically not part of the boiling process. So the whole uh, boiling process is completely self-powered by the difference in specific heat capacity. Now this tepidizer pretty much never comes on. It only comes on when you're first starting it up. This thermosensor tells it to turn on when the supercoolant in here gets below negative 188. And this thermosensor tells these aqua tuners to cool off the condenser when it is above negative 183. Now, this aqua uh, sorry, this thermosensor is keeping these aqua tuners on when the steam in this room is below 1020C. And if the steam gets too hot in this room, then we need to bleed off some of that steam, which is what these doors do. And I have a buffer gate between this thermosensor and these doors, just so that uh, this tends to flip back and forth really quickly sometimes. So this buffer gate just makes sure makes sure that these doors uh, don't flip back and forth because they are actually on the same power grid. They're all powered by these four transformers down here. Um, so these are increasing in power up to 13 now. If you let it run like this forever, this aqua tuner would actually deplete these. But like I said again, I don't really consider this or these to be a part of the build because you could find a different way to cool these steam turbines using wheeze warts or some other method. Now. Uh, you may also notice this petroleum trick that's courtesy of Tony Advance as well. These produce uh, 645, 640, somewhere in there. This one is at 620, so if we average that to 630, then we can do some math on this. So 630 times the four turbines gives us 2520 watts which is just enough to power this aqua tuner and this aqua tuner. So the math checks out. It is self-powered. Um, this has been running for a couple hundred cycles now, and it hasn't stopped.
as long as you keep supplying crude oil, it will keep giving you 60 kilowatts of, uh, almost 60 kilowatts worth of natural gas, and the cooker itself is completely self-powered. So, it is still possible to cook sour gas for free. And again, it's kind of irrelevant since you're going to be producing 60 kilowatts with all that natural gas, but uh, again, I just wanted to show that it is still possible to do it for free. Alright, hopefully this helped, and thanks for watching.